Hello everybody and welcome back to a brand new video. So RuneScape has a lot of history behind it and throughout its history there's been a few interesting interactions uh, within the game that I wouldn't really call bugs but things that players have taken advantage of. Now I'm specifically talking about certain levels that players have gotten that they really just were not supposed to get. An example of this in kind of recent memory is level 2 Herblore. Now through an oversight at Jagex, it was actually possible to get level 2 Herblore where previously it was impossible as completing Druidic Ritual would give you all of the experience required to get to level 3. Now that's just one example, I'm going to be going over 4 different examples today where players got levels they just weren't supposed to get. Now two of these examples are from old school RuneScape and two of them are from RS3 or RS Classic. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed the video and let's get started. Okay, so we may as well start off by talking about the Herblore bug. Now, the way Herblore works is kind of unique. There isn't actually a quest requirement uh, behind making potions. What there is, is there is an experience boost that you get from completing the quest that puts you at a high enough level to make the very first potion. So, for example, you can't make the attack potion until you have level 3 Herblore, and theoretically, the only way to get Herblore experience is by completing Druidic Ritual, which boosts you to 3. Now that was true until an update on May 26th of 2016. Now this was a fairly minor update to Zaya that released a few new fruits and a new pie. Well this pie was called the Botanical Pie and it allowed you to get a plus 4 boost in Herblore. Now previously it actually wasn't possible to boost with a stew but when they put this new uh, pie in the game they kind of forgot about how that would affect the Herblore skill. And essentially, if you made that pie or bought the pie off the Grand Exchange, used the boost to get you to level 5, you were actually able to make an attack potion with no restriction. So if a player managed to get level 3 Herblore in this fashion, pretty much essentially they could continue forward without ever having completed Druidic Rituals. So I'm sure there are quite a few accounts out there with 99 Herblore and Druidic Ritual not completed. However, beyond that, there was actually a different route a lot of people ended up taking, and that was you could make around 4 attack potions, uh, which would get you to level 2 Herblore. Now this was previously impossible, and that made these accounts kind of rare because they fixed it relatively quickly. But still to this day, if you look on the Herblore high scores, you can find players with level 2 Herblore. Not that the high scores are working, but I checked recently and there were around 80 people with level 2 Herblore. And there was actually notably two people with just two Herblore experience. Not really sure how they got that. Now this bug was kind of low-key, but uh, a friend actually made a video on it uh, where it showed him getting level 2 Herblore, and quite a few people copied it. Now this doesn't really have any practical uses beyond just being a rare account that people will never be able to get in the future unless another bug crops up. Now, this next story here is involving construction, and most people will realize that there aren't exactly construction levels that you aren't supposed to get. However, this happened back when construction was released. So back in February of 2013, the construction skill was released, however, it was immediately disabled. Now this was done on purpose. Now the old school RuneScape team kind of remembered from the original construction release back in RS2 that, that the code is very complex, there's a lot of things that can go wrong, so what they decided to do, and I think was probably a good idea, is they released the skill, however they locked it so you couldn't gain experience. You weren't able to train it normally, you couldn't use genie lamps on it or anything like that, and instead of delaying the entire release, they opted to just release a bit of it, but lock the content. Now what's really interesting is, during the first few days, the construction high score had everyone ranked, however they were all level 1, because, well, you couldn't get higher than that skill. However, a few days later, on March 2nd, a player found a way to get around this, now the player was named MF Greg, and the way this was done was via a quest, and that quest being the Darkness of Hallowvale. Now the reason that this worked is the Darkness of Hallowvale actually only has a 5 construction requirement, and for completing the quest you could get 2000 construction experience. Now what was actually possible is you could get a plus 5 boost with a spicy stew which allowed you to complete the quest and get the 2000 experience reward. Now this brought you from level 1 to 13, and by doing that, that actually unlocked a few other ways that you could complete quests to get experience. For example, the Eyes of Glorify had a 5 construction requirement, although you couldn't boost it, but it would give you 250 construction experience. Uh, you could complete the Tower of Life, which had a construction requirement of 10, 
and that gave 1000 experience. And you could complete the Fremnic Isles, which had a level requirement of 20 and gave you a 5000 construction experience reward. Now this essentially made it possible to get to level 26 construction before the POH was actually released and people could train it normally. After a few hours, a few other players realized that you could do this and quite a number of players managed to get above level 1 construction before anyone else could even train it. Now, that wasn't exactly game breaking by any means, but a few players did manage to take advantage of it to sell quest kits right off the bat, and probably overall was a little more impressive and more useful than level 2 herb lore. Okay, the next two stories are from RuneScape 3 or RS2 or RuneScape Classic, however you want to say it. It's not from old school RuneScape. Now, one of the more rare accounts that players actually have are those with 9 hit points. Now, pretty much every account in RuneScape and old school RuneScape starts with 10 hit points. Oh wait, RS3, I don't even know how many hit points you start with, but back in RS2, you started with 10. So how was it possible to get 9 hit points? Well, it required you to have played during the Classic era. During RuneScape Classic, the amount of hit points experience you started with was actually 1,000. However, the reality was that 1,000 experience wasn't actually enough to get you to level 10. They just kind of rounded it back in RuneScape Classic. So for a player who played Classic and then had their account transferred to RuneScape 2, they retained their 1,000 hit points experience. However, in RuneScape 2, the amount of experience required to get you to level 10 was actually 1,154. And that is the amount of experience that pretty much every other player starts with. So when their account was migrated, their hit points level was actually corrected to be 9 hit points, making one of the rarest accounts in the game. Because essentially you needed a brand new account in RuneScape Classic that you never gained hit points experience on, and then you had to have it migrated, so not a lot of players actually had that. And one other thing that made them kind of unpopular for a while is that there was no way to kind of prove that you actually had 9 hit points, because there was no way to look up accounts on the high scores and no way to actually shout out your hit point level. However, that kind of changed in 2008 with Quick Chats, where it allowed you to actually flex on people with your 9 hit points account, as well as there is a player examine feature that allowed you to look at people's hit points level, or constitution I should say, and you could actually see that people had 9 hit points, making the accounts kind of more desirable. Okay, and last up here is another account, kind of similar to a 9 hit point account, but infinitely more rare, and that is a 1 hit point account. Now what makes this extremely desirable is it actually reduces your combat level to level 1, which people can immediately see, and assume that you are hacking somehow or have bugged the game, but in reality it kind of happened very similar to the 9 hit point account. Now once again this also required you to have played during the RuneScape Classic era, and once again this account transferred from RuneScape Classic to RS2, and finally to RS3. This account is actually so rare that as far as I could find there's actually only two accounts uh, that are at least public. Now the way these accounts were actually made is during RuneScape Classic, a very interesting punishment for botting was actually to reset all of your stats to 1. So you can imagine that is a pretty severe punishment, but one interesting oversight is it also uh, reset your hit points to 1, which was the only way to actually have that done. Now the only way this account was created is to have botted in RuneScape Classic, had your account squashed and its stats reduced to 1. Then you need to have gotten it unbanned, which probably didn't happen to a lot of those accounts. And then from there you need to have it transferred to RuneScape 2, and then continue to play onwards to RuneScape 3. So like I said, this account is extremely rare. One of the account owners has estimated its value at around 100 bill. RuneScape 3 gold, I don't really know how accurate that is, but it is definitely one of a kind and a lot of people would pay a lot of money for that. It's a really cool piece of account history, unfortunately the only way to have actually gotten that account is through cheating. It's kind of weird that those accounts were allowed to get unbanned, or the fact that they ever reset your hit point level, because you know what, as a reward for cheating they got probably one of the rarest accounts in the entire game. Uh, which doesn't exactly seem fair to me, but you know what, it's a piece of history. Definitely a bit of an oversight from RuneScape Classic. So anyway guys, that is going to be it for today's video. Those are four instances where people ended up getting levels that they were not supposed to get. Level 2 herb lore, construction levels when the skill was theoretically locked, 9 hit points when the minimum is supposed to be 10, and 1 hit point 
as well as a level 1 combat account. If you have any other interesting stories like that from any of the games, I would be really interested in learning more. I would like to make a few more kind of historical videos like this because I find the history of the game to be extremely interesting and there's just a lot that happened in the early stages of RuneScape, Old School RuneScape, and Classic. Anyway, thanks for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I will see you next time.